the tank went through this wall and destroyed the wall, destroyed the cathedral, killed everyone. It was on the wire and it got inside and that was it. This is the, uh, the tread of the tank. Part of the tread of the tank is still left there. And everyone was killed inside and the Germans did that. was a hospital. The Nazis brought the people out of the hospital and shot them all here. You can see the bullet marks. These are all pock marks from the bullets. The Nazis shot a whole bunch of people right here. Here's a plaque in their commemoration. You can imagine them all lined up against the wall. Dead. Killed them all right there. This is all over Warsaw where you see things like this. capital city and established the proper authorities. The fight started on the 1st of August 1944 and it was al almost obvious that, uh, I mean it was obvious, that uh, the war was almost over and people thought that they would fight maybe for a week, maybe for 10 days. So uh, when this fight started, Hitler went mad. He sent orders to Warsaw to destroy the city and to kill all the inhabitants. And that was the worst and the most cruel battle in Polish history. The Warsaw Uprising lasted 63 days. Just during those two months, 200,000 people were killed, mainly civilians, because only 10% of them were, were soldiers. In total, during the whole Second World War, Warsaw lost 800,000 people. every single house in the old town and in the rest of the city center. They needed three months to destroy wars. When they finished, they left, Russians crossed the river, liberated the ruins, and the war was over. The tragedy was that uh, Warsaw was destroyed in the last weeks of the war without any strategic reason. It was just a revenge of Hitler, and it was a very, let's say, convenient situation for Stalin. Stalin could have helped. His soldiers liberated smaller part of the city, which is on the other bank of the river, and when they reached the river, he ordered them to stop. <laughs> 